Hello, my single solitary viewer. Welcome back to F1 2021. My team, of course, featuring our hero, Sid Garcia. And as you can see, I added the distort uh, decals on the car and decided, you know what? It's going to look better if I just change the livery as a whole. So we've got a brand new livery, and I think it actually looks better than the previous one. Um, and uh, we still have uh, Beatrice here. Uh, working in the office. Uh, it's hard at work. Hard at work. Just pulling no punches. Uh, but yeah. See, uh, the R&D de departments are working hard. Speaking of R&D departments working hard, I was considering uh, upgrading one of these. Uh, the um, facilities, rather. Um, aerodynamics and powertrain already... Uh, leveled up by one. I'd like to do the same thing for the chassis. Now that I'm, I'm going to spend basically another 1.5 million dollars, and that's going to stop for now the spending, unless you tell me otherwise in the comments. Why? Um, because I want to um, start building up some money so that we can offer. Uh, let's see quickly at the driver market, so we can offer perhaps something to another pilot. I don't know that uh, we'll be able to get six million uh, available cash money for Kimi. We'll try. If I stop spending now, that was the last 1.5 million I'm spending for the this half of the season. Everything else is going to go for driver budget, uh, but we... Tell me in the comments if you'd like me to make an offer to, uh, you know, a, a different pilot. Some of them are more expensive than others. Why am I suggesting that? It's because, uh, um, uh, where is he? Where's my dude? Dan Tictum, right down here, has an acclaim of only four. He's he's dirt cheap, but his, uh, his um, ratings are rather low. And what that means is that he doesn't bring me a whole lot of R&D points in the practice sessions. So the car, because he's not very good yet, <laughs> let's not let's not dismiss his entire future, but because he's not that good yet, um, he doesn't uh, he's not uh, well he doesn't he doesn't pay off as much in terms of bringing in the R&D points. Um, even if I were to take uh, Latifi, for example, that would still be a big upgrade compared to. Um, to tick them in terms of helping the team develop. So I'm not I'm not married to keeping tick them, but you could say, and I, I'm willing to listen, if you say, no, no, invest in developing Dan tick them, and he's going to grow with the team. And he, if you build him up, he will be worth it. Um, that could be true as well, but you have to, you have to dedicate resources to building up the, the pilot. Uh, the driver. So, um, somewhat soonish, maybe we'll have a third sponsor. But right now we're at Team Acclaim 7, which is pretty good. And we're in my own hometown of Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. But first, let's set up our activities and try to maximize like the uh, how many? 20, so 21 days, 22, 22 days. I think we might be able to fit almost everything in here. I think getting Team Acclaim is more important. We're gonna... Getting Team Acclaim gets us sponsors, and sponsors get us potentially Kimi Raikkonen. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm gonna proceed like this, thank you. I'm a greedy bastard. As we continue to increase our acclaim, more potential partners become willing to work with us. We can now approach an additional sponsor from the corporate tab. We can? No, we cannot. Uh, oh, I already did. He's late in his news. Okay. Um, but I wanted to check the R&D. See if there's something I can buy for 570. 575, right? Oh, I'm at 574 points. Oh. But I can definitely take the, them spark plugs. Oh, a season break first? Wow, those were two difficult... <laughs> races. Okay, I'll start the the season break. Okay, we've had the new parts come through the fabrication process. We'll have them with us for the next Grand Prix. Ah, uh, the next Grand Prix. 
That is wonderful to hear. Um, I'm gonna improve these materials. It's about time we improved something in the durability department, is it not? The department has requested your attendance at today's meeting to help them resolve it an looks issue. Like our driver has an issue. We need you to step in here. All right. So Tictum feels they've been pushed especially hard recently. Oh yeah, especially after that uh, that like week of rest. That was the difficult rest. And I have requested some personal time to give them a chance to recharge thoughts. So if I accept. They're going to gain awareness, but lose racecraft, and if I decline, they're going to gain racecraft and lose awareness. Hey. I'll accept. I'm such a softy. You handled that well. Thank you. Oh, did I? Because I'm sure he would have told me that I'd handled that well either way. Well, based on the practice, uh, Sid should qualify roughly at the same spot as uh, Imola, roughly in the top 10, maybe about 8, 9, uh, unless I really knock it out of the park. And of course, Dan Tictum, lacking a little bit of uh, skill, um, uh, doesn't get a whole lot of r &D points. I didn't get a whole lot of acclaim because I touched a wall, and that does reduce your acclaim in practice. So uh, I, I didn't really impress anybody <laughs> with my wall touching. And of course, if you know the Circuit Jules Villeneuve, the Canadian Grand Prix, you can guess which wall I touched. I think uh, that one is kind of a safe bet. Leclerc boned me. And I didn't even consent. So since the cloud did bone me, let's try another lap. You're in P6. That lap puts you into P6. Huh. Apparently, the cloud boned me, and it was still enough to improve. Okay. Well, I'm still going for it because I doubt I'll actually stay in P6. Once other drivers start logging in. Their final attempts. My sector one is slow. My sector two is adequate. Well, what about the Sector 3? I don't think I, uh... The pinhead, I didn't think I, I did great. <laughs> Three. Probably try to push it a little too far. But I think, uh... I think we managed to, uh... Pull the best time possible out of that car. 
So I don't know if it's because I'm so well versed with the track because I live there, I bike on it, I, and I was I did rollerblade on it when I was younger. With qualifying finished. It's time to remind ourselves. But eighth of our is what I predicted. Three, Verstappen, Perez, and Lewis Hamilton. Well, that wraps up qualifying, but don't worry, we'll be back tomorrow as we head into the Grand Prix. Eighth is what I predicted, and I think that's roughly where um, the car should be on tracks in which I am well familiar. Welcome to my hometown. Hello and welcome to the Ile Notre Dame once again for what promises to be another incredible Canadian Grand Prix at a fiercely competitive circuit where pole position can often be decided by less than a tenth of a second. We'll be seeing top speeds of around 210 miles an hour here at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve with around two thirds of the lap taken at full throttle. High speed chicanes spell potential danger, especially at the infamous wall of champions. And watch out for overtaking into the hairpin and the final chicane. And as always, a man with plenty of racing experience joins me in the commentary box. Today, it's Anthony Davidson. Tell me, Ant, you're no stranger to surviving the melee of turn one. So how do you keep out of trouble when there's so much going on around you? There are three main things to worry about there, Crofty. Positioning, awareness, and discipline. First, you have to put your car in a bit of space and make sure you have room to react to what the others are doing. Then you have to watch your mirrors and listen to the sounds around you to get a sense of where everyone is. And finally, just don't get too greedy. Just because a gap exists doesn't always mean you should go for it. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday, and he starts from pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Bottas, Carlos Sainz and Leclerc, Ricardo, Garcia, Gasly and Lando Norris, Fernando Alonso, Vettel, Yuki Tsunoda and Ocon, Stroll, Mick Schumacher, Kimi Raikkonen and George Russell, Tigtum, Giovinazzi, Latifi and Nikita Mazepin. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Now that we've got some points from the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. We'll aim, we'll aim. Um, I think my uh, soft tires can last a lot longer than this. I'm going to repeat the strategy from Bahrain and um, pit, do an overcut. And basically split the lap. Mm, I don't want to, do I want to push it too far? Do I not? I'm going to pit halfway through. Let's see how that works. And I can always like call and a pit early if, uh, if it feels like I'm losing traction. So that way that allows me to, to pit earlier if I want to. Did I mess up? Boy, it looks like I might have. Oh, that's a little too rough and tumble. It wasn't a terrible, but I squeezed through uh, and I really screwed over Lando right there, I believe that was. I think there's some drivers who are not going to like me, but uh, sixth place it is. I think the car is still okay. Didn't see any pieces flying off. I'm thinking maybe I should uh, increase damage. Maybe I need to increase damage up a notch. Maybe reduced damage is not redu uh, is too reduced. That was actually Danny Ricardo sent to the back of the line. I feel like that's karma.
So we're pretty much racing at a status quo here, thanks to DRS, really. Because you can tell that Leclerc is actually a little bit faster than I am. And I'm just, like, basically being... <laughs> being a massive, massive douche to him. So I should... Really, I should be seventh. But I'm sixth. Um, and I have to f hope that my risky pitting strategy is going to pay off. But there's no way I can do better than fifth, I think. We're approaching the pit window. You'll be on the mediums. Check your MFD for a new strategy option. Right, so Charles Leclerc decided to pit on this lap, as was my default strategy. Sainz is likely then to pit on the next lap. But I want to have a good eye as to where okay, everybody ends up lining up. Five tenths a lap, five tenths. Are we really thinking I'm going to lose tire grip? Are we really thinking that? It appears to be the case, but, uh... This next lap is when I pit, so... All I have to do is one more lap. In this lap, in this lap, push now. Dan is in the pits. Daniel is coming in for his stop. Right, come in at the end of this lap. Thank you. Because I think I'm not gaining as much as I thought. But I did get to do a whole lap in first place. But does the strategy pay off? Or will I get punished for it? That is the question. Got a lot of folks driving by. But here's the uh, moment of truth. Saints and Leclerc both passing. That was our last stop. Uh, both no passing. Stops. It did not pay off. Well, I'm still in front of Leclerc, so it didn't pay off. I wasn't punished either just full-on pure status quo but I'm fortunately I'm farther behind science so I can't DRS him so I'm gonna have to defend against Leclerc without the possibility of DRSing myself I just caught up to science and I think I'll be able to start DRSing Behind him, there you go. There's a chance... I don't see where I could do a move, though. There's really not a whole lot of opportunities for passing. If you can't do it at the end of this straight... You're probably not fast enough, you know? the gap on the car behind by five tenths per lap. That's thanks to DRS, Jeff. Thanks to DRS. Come on, come on, come on. Nah. Nah. I 
think I nudged him, dang it. Final lap of the race. Oh, was that ever a dirty move? Can I lock it in? Oh. Look at the skill. That was actually very smooth. But then things turn ugly when he refuses to give up. Oh, yeah. That bastard. Well, suddenly I'm glad the I don't have sim damage, because the race would have been over there. But uh, he did. He refused to admit defeat when it had clearly passed him. I think and I moved up into fifth like a like a campeon right on the final lap oh no get out of my way no 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 live live as we come down the final straight someone DRS's off our Flues Crew racing car. I try to block the line, but unfortunately, that makes me touch the wall. And that gives them an opening. Oh! That's the end of the race. We'll see you in part for a night. That they just are shy of actually capitalizing on. <laughs> We're going to have to see a replay of that finish. Lewis Hamilton takes over the lead of the Drivers' Championship after an excellent result. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? Well, for me, it's got to be Lewis Hamilton. The multiple world champion may be the boring choice at this point, but you can't argue that he's a driver deserving of his reputation. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship, Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Meanwhile, Ferrari have improved their position. A strong weekend from them as they fight their way towards the top. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Well, that was a strong performance by Sid. So maybe I still have to boop the difficulty level just a tad bit even though Montreal is one of the tracks I am most familiar with, so I'm not surprised I would do generally better than usual. Um, but uh, Dan Tictum did not do very well. He didn't even manage to get 15th, which I would have hoped would be, like, among his uh, bad ones. Well, well, well. Sponsored by the Flues Crew on Patreon.